um, and, and I, yeah, say so hired me anyway. Had some success before that, but I, I'd come out to a baseball game and I had on a red little mock turtleneck kind of thing, and it had JC Jackson County on the on the collar, and I, and I, I was standing with Coach Nix, and I said, Coach, I'm sorry that I got. The, this JC thing on my shirt, he said, that's the only thing that's saving you. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but anyway, I, you know, I of course have checked out uh, you know, Northside and, and, and athletics, you know, and fine arts, all the extra curricular things are very important to me. And, and, and you know, then, as Coach Nick would say, this is a big deal. It's a big deal. And, uh, <laughs> And all those players were also 18 starters. And, and one of my first football conversations with Coach Nix, I said, uh, Coach, well, how many games do you expect to win this year? He said, all of them. <laughs> and guess what? It did. It did. <laughs> we're about 170 pound nose guard. That, those guys, there's no way in the world that they should have done that. And, uh, and, and the, the, of course, I've been following Georgia High School football for many, many years, and, and I know it probably could be said of Coach Nix throughout his entire career, but, but I know during my time that nobody, nobody has done a better job of coaching a football team than Coach Conrad Nix. Right. I mean, it just hadn't happened. The, 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 the thing about Coach Nix is, you know, Coach Nix, he won more yesterday, okay? And uh, you would just, you know, people get these things in their mind, but, you know, in education, we talk about being a lifelong learner. And, and you've got to do that. I mean, you can't, if you don't do anything new, if you don't challenge yourself, if you don't try to learn, you're certainly not getting better. You're backing up. There's no such thing as treading water. And one of the characteristics about Coach Nix that I most admire is the fact that he continued to learn and evolve. And you said you were talking about the wishbone, and nobody in the country, I don't care who they are, college or otherwise, does a better job with the type of offense that he has installed and, and done. He's just done a great, great job, and, and it's been really important. I've learned a lot from Coach Nix. I've learned that there are a, a lot of things that, that you know, it doesn't have to be all this or all that. Uh, you, you, know, you can do many things. And, and one thing that I take from Coach Nix, and I, you hear it throughout all of this, is, is there's no question that his faith is first, and his family is second, and then Northside. And it's a great deal for me. I, I'm a better husband, and I'm a better father because of, of Coach Nix. I mean, there's no question about that. Uh, and what he means to me is and this. This is a little bitty thing, and you know it's probably a little. You know, you didn't even think about it, but you know, I, I was I was a little. You know, no offense, Kevin. I was a little heartbroken <laughs> when Coach Nix uh, decided that he was going to to retire because I really I really wanted him to coach my son, but uh, when he when he wrote his letter of retirement, he put my name in it and thanked me for my support. And that's a big deal, Coach. That's a big deal <laughs> for me. And, uh, and I appreciate that very much, and, I, and I've kept that. I treasure that. You know, there were other names in there, too. <laughs> but mine was in there, and, and I just appreciate everything that he's done for Northside, all of this county, and, and what he's brought to it. and, and the, the role model that he has provided for me and continues to provide for me. I will uh, be forever grateful, Coach. I love you and I appreciate you. Our next speaker is another example not only being a great football player at Northside, but a great individual. He graduated from here in 2000, earning a scholarship to Valdosta State University, where he played on the 2004 National Championship team. Now, because he played offensive line, I don't have stats to read off, like D'Antonio's tackles or Leonard's rushing yards, 
But I tell you in the words of Mark Stewart, that every team has to have a bell cow. Well, this young man is definitely the bell cow to not only lead the running back through the defensive line, but he can lead young men to a bright future. And he's doing that today because after he earned his degree from Valdosta State University, he returned home to Housing County where he's now a teacher and a varsity coach at Perry High School, Tory Howard. started I just want to do one thing uh, no it's not gonna be make you do yoga like Leonard just made you do it but I just wanted to finish that story of D'Antonio when he came out flip-flop <laughs> you know it shocked me too you know because D'Antonio if you knew him uh, he was a great football player and you know, I come from the era, you see Deion Sanders, all those guys, Deion goes to the to pro day and you know, he just runs the 40 and he just gloats and sits down. But D'Antonio, he's one of those guys that he's going to go in there in the weight room, he's going to give it 100%. And it didn't matter how many tackles he had, you know, he was going to bust his tail. And that's the type of guy he was. But, story go. <laughs> yeah, he pulled his hamstring. Ricky Reed didn't say, I don't know what happened to Ricky, but Coach Nix walks out there, and I think we ripped him off, Leonard. Yes, we did. Uh, and rest was talking trash to the defense, and I, I kind of think that's what got Coach Nix ticked off of. <laughs> it wasn't any competition. <laughs> so <laughs> he looks at Dan and says, I could not boy. <laughs> Earl Blip Blocks. <laughs> he goes on and say, I'm there, we're free. I'm a boy, Tom, what's that there? I sure will. Uh, and my wife will attest to this. That Tuesday night, it was like I had an assignment. Uh, I sat down and I brainstormed, and I must have had three pages, and I had to dwindle it down to uh, just a couple of things. Uh, and this is what I got. Um, Coach Nick, you were born. I hope this is the right call. It's not just the rest of the spot. You were born May 15th, 1945, on the Onta, Alabama. Wife, Miss Patsy Nix. Uh, sons, Rusty and Patrick Nix. D'Antonio Burnett Nix. <laughs> Jason Risper Nix. <laughs> Kelvin McDavis Nix. And last but not least, Chances study next. <laughs> I've been waiting to say that for years. <laughs> I just want to thank the Nix family for, for sharing Coach Nix with us. Uh, it wasn't a long one because, you know, we can never pay you guys back for the time you missed with him at the house, but we sure do appreciate it. Thank you guys. Um, as a player, you remember thousands of things about Coach Nix, um, but there are a few things in my mind that stand out, and some of them have been brought up earlier. First and foremost, his faith as a Christian. You knew that right off the bat. Uh, you knew who was in charge at Northside High School. You knew it was Coach Nix at all times. You remember the scowl on his face when you missed the block. That, <laughs> You also remember that, uh, I think it was better to miss a block and have him scowl at you than to do a good job and have him hit you in the face match with that, 
with those hands because you did good. Uh, you remember the southern drawl in his voice? That was like no other that you had ever heard. Uh, and I also, as a player, remember wishing that the projector in the lunchroom would just blow up. <laughs> So we didn't have to watch practice film because, you know, the defense went their way and the offense had to stay there with Coach Nicks. And there was going to be some period of time while watching that practice film where it was going to be pause. And you're going to have that red laser pointed at you on that practice film. Your body was going to be in a contorted in an awkward manner. You're going to be busting the play. And then you will hear one of his most famous sayings. <laughs> that is awful. <laughs> I've heard that a lot. Heard that a lot. Uh, I remember 1997. Uh, yes, that was a year doing the hog drive, but I remember 1997. Uh, because it was without a doubt Coach Nixon's greatest job coaching. No disrespect to his past year, but 1997 was when Coach Nix took his vision for Northside and really took off. Uh, we had started off the season, uh, had a couple losses, lost to Robert E. Lee. Peach kind of beat us up pretty good. But somewhere during that season, he took uh, ordinary Northside football team and Northside program and he made it do the extraordinary. Uh, you hear about beating Lions being number one and you know that's why I say 1997 is dear to me because most people don't remember that. They, they remember the 10 and O's and the, the 15 and O's but 9 and 4 with the kids that we had that year um, and making us overachieve. That was a, a big time year to me, big time year. I remember the first formation and play that you learned when you were at practice here at Northside. Pro right, 24 power. And that was the equivalent of 22 trap, you all, because we ran that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Uh, I remember also in 1997, Willie Rocks, he moved to Northside with a dream of grandeur to play fullback. Then Coach Nix led in Mr. Robinson's dream turned to a nightmare on Green Street <laughs> by introducing him to Mr. Freddy Krueger at linebacker himself, D'Antonio. Uh, his only two plays at fullback sounded like the Automata Piers doing Batman. 24 power, bam! 25 power, pow! Uh, <laughs> Mr. Robinson went on to have a pretty good career here at Northside at defensive end, though. <laughs> As a player, you remember Northside High School was full, was first class. So it was first class. Your socks, your jersey, your helmet, your pads, everything was top notch, and that's the way Coach Nix had it. Coach Nix was very meticulous uh, in his approach to coaching. As a matter of fact, you know, I had a short internship here during the springtime in 2005 when I left college. And we were doing agilities, doing six period. And I can remember I forgot my shorts to wear to practice. And I was out there in blue jeans doing uh, coaching agilities. And I can remember before practice, I let Coach Smith, Coach Stewart know. Coach Smith was looking at me like he was worried about me. <laughs> Coach Stewart, you just heard the laugh. That's exactly what he did that day. When I 
forgot my shorts. Uh, we went out there, went through agilities. Coach Nick said nothing. We left the field. Coach Nick said nothing. Well, we were supposed to go to Georgia Tech that evening uh, for a coaching clinic. Uh, and I can remember he rented a van for all the other coaches. And he was, you know, very meticulous. So he assigned everybody to what van you been in, how you gonna get there, what time we gonna get there, everything. You know, I'm like, I didn't know what traffic gonna be like. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but we got there at the time he had on the sheet. Uh, I can remember he called out everybody's name to get in the van. Coach Smith, you're going to be so and so. All right. He forgot somebody's name. And I'm sitting there like, well, you know, it's in the back of my mind now that I think, dang, he forgot. I hope he forgot. Who am I riding with? You're with Rob McCoy. <laughs> And you know, he didn't have to tell you why I was out with him. I knew exactly why. I was 22 years old, graduated from college, you know. Felt like I was grown. But I got in that van. And by the time we left Northside Drive and hit Alberta Road, I'm sitting there like, I just needed a pat on the back or something. <laughs> he asked me, did you see anybody else out there? Blue jeans, no, sir. <laughs> you know, I was just a substitute, so I was like, maybe you let me. No. He said, I'm not going to put up with it. I was like, yes, sir. And, and you know, that was that. Then he told me that uh, they were going to drop Marquez and them all uh, in Atlanta. And he expected me to bring them back to Warner Robins that night and wake up at 6 o'clock and have them back in Atlanta. It was pretty good. Then, you know, it was summertime, and then, you know, I played basketball, played baseball, then it was AAU basketball time. We were traveling all over the world playing, so I missed most of the football workouts that, you know, I didn't really care about. So it, it was time for football camp to come up again. So right back where I started, not wanting to play. So I come up with this great plan to get rid of football and to get rid of Coach Nick. <laughs> what I do, I, I coerce my dad and take me to the dermatologist because uh, I, you know, I was going through puberty, but you know that had nothing to do with it. So I had a breakout on my forehead, so I went and asked the doctor, did the football helmet have anything to do with me breaking out? <laughs> so I, I have, I have a note. I mean, how, how can Coach Nick say no to the doctor? Right? So my dad was with me. I met Coach Nix at the fence, I gave him a note, and he looked at it, and the look he gave me was priceless. You can imagine, he just shook his head and was like, just say they'll see me tomorrow. So I, I figured, you know, what's one more year playing football, and you know, I'll hold the clipboard, write down plays, so it was fine. So, unbeknownst, um, my future was unfolded right before my eyes. Um, a couple of days or weeks later, I can't remember, the starter, coming to the season got injured. So I was kind of, you know, it was kind of a big deal now. I could be the starting quarterback for Northside High School, you know, playing with guys like Jason, you know, Tory, guys that I, you know, I really have to step up my play and, you know, come to do it. So go through the preseason, I do a decent job. And, and I was still a little worried once, you know, Anthony came back that I wouldn't be the starter anymore. So I went into Coach Nixon's office and I asked him, you know, what are the chances of me keeping my starting job? He told me to just keep doing what I'm doing and I'll be okay. So I guess the next three years are kind of, you know, history in itself. You know, you got to kind of fill in the blanks of what happened, but it was, it was some of the greatest years of my life that God put someone in, in my life in 1999 that has really formed my life into where I am today. I'm standing in front of you today in this suit, in a tie, because of Coach Nick. Because the things he instilled in me, the, the hard work, the never give up attitude, the always competing was some of the greatest things that, that he, he's done for me. But now, we fast forward eight years, 
I have an undying love for the game that I, I wouldn't trade for anything. I have a lifetime full of memories, and that's only because because Nick's cared enough for me not to let me quit. Just not only on football, but on my family and on the city of Warner Robins. I'm just one of the many lives that Coach Nick has touched and turned around. I'm a firm believer that God places specific people in your life at specific times. And I think Coach Nick was my guardian angel. His love for God, his never give up attitude, and his accountability for players and coaches alike it's something I keep with me to this day. And I just want to thank God, thank my parents, and thanks Coach Nix for what he's done for me and all the countless other lives that he's touched. Thank you. presentation and, and then uh, we'll have our guest of honor get up and speak and uh, we'll let you know that when he wraps up if you'll give us just a few minutes after Coach Nix I'm going to get up and we'll have one more person come up but this time I'm going to ask for uh, our new head football coach and athletic director to come up Coach Kevin Kinsley. say the same thing about you. Uh, I have a presentation before I, I get to that. You know, I, I thought about, you know, it, it's, I've been really busy talking about and worried about what, you know, different people are going to say. I hadn't really thought about a lot of the things that uh, I could say uh, about Coach Nix. There's a lot of things that I love about Coach Nix. I love uh, when his sons come to the football games. I love the feeling that it, I get inside when I want to do my best because his kids are there watching. I love the way that makes me feel. I love it when his family comes from Alabama to watch games. <coughs> come down and watch. I love the way that that made me feel like I wanted to do my best to make Coach, look, Coach Nix look as good as he can look. I love the way when we went out every Friday night, the way it made me feel confident 
just like Coach Nicks, that we, we had a chance to win any, any game we played. And the way that he made me want to be the best that I could be. You know, the consistent thing about Coach Nicks is you hear a lot of these guys talk about you just don't want to say no to them. You just don't want to, you know, disappoint Coach Nicks and you can't say no. And Jimmy, you know, uh, you said about being able to say no, no to Coach Nicks. Well, I want you to know that one of the things I've asked Coach Nicks to do is be the liaison to all you business people out there. <laughs> So I won't be calling you, but I promise you Coach Nix will be. <laughs> but it wasn't, it wasn't saying no to Coach Nix. Coach Nix gave you an example through his work ethic, through first his faith, through his work ethic, through his commitment, and through his love. And it wasn't saying no to him. It was the way He made you feel about yourself that you didn't want to say no to yourself. And when He challenged you, you wanted to live up to it. You didn't want to disappoint yourself in His eyes. I don't know if that makes sense. But He made players feel that way. He made us assistant coaches feel that way. We're better coaches and we're better people because of the example the challenges he gave himself to be the best that he could be. You wanted to be just like that. The worst part, and Coach, I could go back and tell a lot of stories about when I played. And most of them are pretty bad memories because I wasn't very good. Uh, I remember when I was a junior, we got out of the wishbone. I thought Coach Nix was going to open it up we were going to become sort of more of a conventional offense. And we did open it up. We threw it about three times again. <laughs> we were uh, playing somebody. We were winning, I think, uh, the defense had a shutout. And back then, uh, my, my mother tried to make me wear these hard contact lenses, and I hated them because they hurt my eyes, so I didn't wear them. But she wouldn't give me my glasses because she paid a lot for the contacts. <laughs> So she was going, she was bad determined I was going to wear them, and I was bad determined I wasn't. So I played most of my junior year, seeing half of most of the games I played. In. And we were playing somebody, and we ran the, the drag route off the power. We faked the power and ran across the route with tight end. I threw an interception late in the game, and uh, they intercepted it and ran it back like 45 yards for a touchdown. So I jogged off the field and Tory, you know, he was doing that kind of stuff where you thought you were getting away with it way back then. Because I came to the sideline and stood right beside him. And I was ripped. I was braced. My neck was stiffened up. Because in those days, Tory, the pats on the face weren't for the good job. <laughs> and I was braced. And uh, I knew it was coming, but nothing. Nothing. So, uh, Kicking team goes out on the field, kick return team, and uh, they kick the extra point, still nothing. Their uh, kickoff team comes out, we return the kick, still nothing. So I had forgotten about it. And I had to go back out. I was on the quarterback we had at that time, and I had already relaxed. And then, bam, right upside the head. <laughs> Run it again, and this time, make sure he clears the linebacker, and then throw it. <laughs> As a coach, I got a lot of great memories of working the last several years with Coach Nix. I love the way he challenged me. I love the way he cared about me. I love the way he made me better. One of the things I look forward to the most is when we went out on Friday night, get ready to go through that run through sign. We all shook each other's hands. And he and I would always come together like We'd shake our hands, give each other a hug, and I knew it was okay. I was ready to go by. The worst part of my coaching career at Northside was constantly being asked, 
when's coach going to retire? And I hate it. And I've been listening to it for years. When's he going to retire? I know that people didn't want him to retire. I didn't, I didn't want him to retire. But I had to listen to it over and over again, and I, I hated it. I love coaching at Northside. I love coaching at Northside. I love walking in and seeing him every day. We didn't always see eye to eye, but I love every day coming in and trying to please him. Because I knew it was making me better. Now you went and did it anyway. <laughs> right after he announced his retirement, I went and looked through some of my old stuff and I found my team goals from 1978. And he still hands them out today. And on the top of the list of that team goals, number one, come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 2009, Number one team, go. Come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's a lot of guys walking the earth today <coughs> because of the seeds of Jesus Christ that were planted by Conrad and Because they wouldn't have made it if they hadn't had that seed planted in them. The thing I value most about coaching at Northside High School, the biggest reason I'm still at Northside High School because it was a Christian program run by a Christian man that loved Jesus Christ. And I don't care if I coach five more years, ten more years, twenty more years after seeing how it could be done under Coach Conrad Nix, I'll never coach in a non-Christian program. And if I have to, I'll quit because of the example he set for me. Coach, I appreciate that. Coach, get to the presentation. I've got two things for you. Number one, any player, you heard every one of them talk about his faith. Every one of them talked about his faith and, and what's important to him. And I know Coach Nix. I really do. I know how important the souls of those players throughout the years have been to him. I've seen him walk locker to locker and pray for each kid when they weren't even sitting in their locker. I've seen him pray for them, pray for them when everybody else had given up on them, including sometimes us, assistant coaches. I know how important his faith is to him and his family. Coach, keeping that in mind, friends in the Northside family, the Northside community, wanted to give you something to honor you and your service in Northside High School. And what we've come up with, and, and before I do this, I, I want the uh, executive committee for the Northside Boots Club to please stand if you will. Because they need to be recognized for putting this together. people that you saw were, were really hard putting this whole thing together and, and making a lot of these things happen and uh, going out and really uh, doing a lot of the work and the groundwork and I, I, I really appreciate this group and the effort that they gave. And Coach, uh, what we'd like to do for, for, for you and Miss Patsy is we know how important it is how important Jesus Christ is to you. What we'd like for the two of you to do is be able to walk where Jesus walked. And we're giving you a 10-day trip to the Holy Land.
besides finals. 300 career wins, 12 city championships, eight region championships, five state title appearances, two state titles, and one great community. The Northside family would like to show appreciation to Coach Conrad Nix for a career of unwavering commitment, steadfast beliefs, unending persistence, and uncommon love for the young people and the community of Northside High School. We are thankful to Coach Nix for being a man of great faith, a faith that led you to first care for the souls of each young man and second their success on the field. We would like to further recognize Conrad Nix for representing himself as a man of God, as a man of integrity, as a man of passion, and as a man who inspired the belief that it's great to be in the society. Ladies and gentlemen, there's you. Some of us have been here for a while, and it's sort of time for a body break, isn't it? <laughs> you know, Kevin uh, uh, did a really good job of planning this, preparing this, and those lights are pretty bad. Those lights are pretty bad. Pretty bad. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know uh, all the people think and all that, but I know that... Uh, uh, Kevin Hewitt and Patsy has been playing this for about five years now, so we've <laughs> <laughs> had plenty of time. Had plenty of time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's really nice that Mr. Horn, I, I, I'm not, I don't think he's here, but it's really nice that Mr. Horn let us use his facility. Right and I, I appreciate Ray for doing that. A lot of, uh, lot of uh, great opportunities and all that. Obviously, I'm very humble. I'm very blessed. I feel uh, very inadequate to be all of those good things say about you, but uh, you know, just a few things uh, uh, about some of the speakers and all you uh, players. Uh, not only the words you spoke, but guys, the manner that you spoke, you guys delivered great. I'm so proud of you, so thankful that uh, you articulated. You you did such a good good job explaining things, and Mr. Author, uh, Coach Dice has already explained that you sort of set the standard for Northside High School. You set the tempo. You the one that we all uh, learn how to be a Northside Eagle from. You know, uh, Mr. Arthur's a very conservative person. And I, I'll never forget, I'm sure Mr. Arthur, you remember this too, but uh, uh, I don't even remember what pet rabbit was, but we had some great pet rabbits back those days, just like we do now, but some great pet rabbits. Mr. Arthur stood up there, and uh, he was doing his little talking all like he always does. He started taking off his shirt. Taking off his shirt. Y'all, Coach, you remember that? Mr. Offer, you remember that? I, I was shocked, I, you know, here. And that showed me that, uh, you know, how important Northside High School was. Whatever it needed to be done, he would do that for us. Uh, I often wonder, too, when I first came back to Northside, or when I first came to Northside, and uh, the first time that I met you, uh, Mr. Offer, is really it, at the counter at the old north side before they did all that remodeling and all. You were on one side of the counter and I was on the other side of the counter. That's when north side and Warner Robins was sharing the school here. I'd come over for a visit to, with the Warner Robins to interview with them. And you said, you come, you need to come to this school, young know, man. <laughs> I'll never forget that and tell me that. But uh, Mr. Arthur filmed when I first came back. Filmed the ball games. And uh, I wondered why he did that. Until I retired, Mr. Alton, one of my big dilemmas, I've been asked this several times, where are you going to stay, stand, and sit during the ball games? I know why you did up, got up there and filmed out so you wouldn't have to worry about all of that other stuff and all that stuff. You know, the opportunity you gave us to Coach Matt Lane, so many things I could say about Matt, 
you know, the things that he went through, uh, you know, it's a great uh, testament to you and uh, his devotion for the game of football. Uh, Baylor, the trip that we made to Baylor, you know, that really signified the time where we come out. We came of age from, we carried like 27 buses to Baylor and Chattanooga to play. And uh, we beat them too, I think. But it was a great night, great time. Uh, Ed, our friendship, uh, our families grew up together. Uh, we grew as Christians together. Uh, you did sleep a little bit on the table. Most time on top of the table, they're scared of the mice, you know. They just on top of the table, uh, but uh, a, a great friend and a great guy. Uh, Coach Hawkins, uh, you know, you uh, mentioned it already. Uh, I'm just uh, so thankful that uh, you were in my life. Not only in my life, but Texas life to you and Ms. Hawkins. And meant so much to us and still do. He comes to all of our reunions. We have a reunion every year. He comes to it. I'm certainly appreciative of that. Uh, the Carpenter family. David, I know you're the superintendent now. You've done a great job, and I commend you for that. Uh, Danny, uh, your love. You know, to see you grow up, really becoming a man. You know, you're almost there. <laughs> Seeing you become a man. Sean, I'll never forget you and when you were in high school. Come into my office, prance your little self in there, get in front of my trophies, look at your hair, make sure your hair was just right, all that kind of stuff. You haven't changed much, girl. You haven't changed much. Still look great. No. Jake and Katie, I feel like if they're part of me, I remember when both of them were born. Miss Carpenter, you know, how special you are to us. Diane, you know, I've known you forever too, girl. You know, the Carpenter family's been very, very supportive of Northside through the years. Uh, all the coaches, you know, uh, I can't see it now, but uh, I know, that I think it might battle some Carolyn battles that sit back there in the back. Uh, Mike Battles, y'all know that uh, uh, he coached here for a time. Uh, the, the great thing that, about Mike, I remember this, uh, his first coaching job was with me at uh, Lincoln Talladega County High School. And Mike and I coached, and he had graduated from Mississippi Southern at that time. So when football season was over, and we had a good year that year, and when football season was over, he went back to Hattiesburg, so Mississippi Southern, to finish up his degree. Well, they called me at Irwin County to come over there and interview for a job. Got over there, and you know, it's very appealing, all this kind of stuff, enticing, make a lot of more money, blah, blah, blah. Back that time, you know, if you're making $7,000 and somebody offered you $12,000, that was big, you know? So uh, I go and uh, I call Mike, and I said, Mike, we're going to Irwin County High School. Uh, he said, okay. I said, I'm gonna load your furniture on my truck, on the truck, and I'm gonna carry it and move you to, to Irwin County. He said, okay, coach, okay. So I, I moved his stuff and he I moved his furniture into the front of the gym until he got over there and then he moved in to a house that's county on a couple of houses. We moved into those, but Mike's been a, a part of our family forever. Our families have been together. All the coaches that you've already been mentioned, the, the Steve Axley's, the Steve Hardews, the Rodney Greens, the Dale Pruitt's, Charles Anthony's, a lot of you guys remember those those names. Obviously, the Vaughn Lassiter, I, I think Vaughn's here. Jerry Allen's, you know, Jerry, what a special person Jerry Allen is. Chad Alley Goods, and Mike Chestains, and Jason Resperts, the Ricky Smiths, all of those kind of people that we recognize and call us in a while. And certainly the guys that's with us now. And if you would, guys, just, you know, without any applause, but I'd like you guys to stand. Uh, Y'all already know Kevin. Kevin Smith, if you just stand right there. Mark Stewart. Randy Carr, I haven't seen Randy here today. Ryan Crawford, Mark Estes, Reggie Thorpe, Reggie, how you've grown, son. I hope that uh, it's been good for you. Uh, Chris Harrison, I think they have baseball today or something. Chris Gerald, Ken Price, Coach Price is here. Greg Street, here. Guys, I went to his wedding another night. You're talking about first class now. I mean, first top class. Very impressive. Congratulations. And Bonnie Hitchcock sitting right over there, training, does a great job. And all those other coaches that might be here that other sports and all. But guys, I really, really appreciate y'all being a part of Northside High School. Okay. Let's give those guys a...
uh, a lot of things have been said about me, but basically it's said about Northside High School. You know, uh, truthfully, we're celebrating a decade of football excellence. That's really what we celebrate. We get right down to it. Uh, if we'd been a mediocre team, mediocre schedule, uh, winning and losing and all, uh, pro probably we wouldn't have this occasion tonight. I know that even a lot of my family wouldn't have been here tonight. You know? <laughs> but really and truly, that's what we're recognizing. That's what we celebrate. I don't want us to, I want to make sure that we understand that. What so many people, D'Antonio and Leonard, Leonard Goosby, I don't think Tom mentioned this stat and all, but who's the leading rusher, all time rusher in a Northside Warner Robins game? All the years, James Brooks, some of those guys. Leonard Goosby sitting right over there, you know. Great player. Thank me for thank me for letting him play fullback. He had to get on the field someplace. Someplace in play. You know, I'm so thankful for those guys. All of them. How much they've meant for this program. They did a, a great job and all the players through the years. They had so many that I'd like to mention, but just uh, so proud of those guys and the way that they accomplished the, the things that they have and the way they carried themselves through the years. And now, uh, uh, successful adults and members. I've never really talked about, uh, you know, we, we win, but and like coach, so many of the coaches have already said, I've never gone into a ball game thinking that we're going to lose. But I'm going to tell you, the same part of it, I never went into a ball game expecting it to be easy. We prepared for every ball game just like it was a state championship game. You know, that's a, a part of being successful, I think. But what I want for our guys, and this is something I try to tell them all the time, that in 20 years, in 20 years, I don't say near as long as it used to. When I used to say that, it seemed like a long time. You know, I'm serious. But, uh, you know, in 20 years, I want to look back and I want them to be successful adults. I want to be productive family people. I want them to be successful. And I want them to have fun memories of their high school experience. Fun memories. Not just the football, but everything at Northside High School. I want them to have fun memories. And those things that I'm really uh, worked at and then hopefully uh, did a, a pretty good job of. And again, I, like I said, I'm not going to call out a, a lot of the players' names now. There's just so many guys that I'm so thankful for to be a part of their lives and then be a part of my lives. The fact and staff at Northside, you know, what a great group of people to work with through the years. Uh, the principals that you've already met, Dr. Hines, of course, Mark's got the latest two guys and the, all of those guys. Just some fact and staff, and I want, you know, and I'm going to put a a plural on these, and it's just sort of a group of people. The Monica Smiths, the Jennifer Dollars, the Sherry Rogers, the Ray Horns, the Miss Woolies, the Tamika Blackmans, the Greta Cody's, the Jane Adams, the Jane Wilsons, the Patricia Ogletrees, the Janine McSwain, the Kim Stewart, Jenny Newberry, the Donna Halbrillas. Now, Donna, you and I were in a patch, we're in Hilton Head uh, last week, and I didn't even get to see you. You were in the same place, but anyway. Those, the Don Halbrell, the Lynn Campbells, the Carmen Hortons, the Vicki Jones, the Walter Walkers, the Colonel Wingy, Chief James, the guys in the paddocks, the, the Shirley Sims, and I saw Shirley here today, the Larry Warnocks, the Mike Gins, the Bevel Lunsfords, all of those people is what Northside about, what's part of my life, what's a big part of my life, and I, I really, really appreciate the support now that they've given Northside through the years. The first tenure I was here, some of the people, and I know a lot of these have been recognized already, but Barbara and Ted Waddle. I mean, they have been here forever, consistent, ever. They're going to be here. They're going to be here. The Steve Pinsalls, the Bobby, uh, Bobby Melba Shepherd, the Bank Brazzles, the Home Childs, the Ben Haynes, the Robert Dominus, Mike Martin. Mike Martin has been videoing since almost. Mike again took Mr. Arthur's place for, for a short period of time. And uh, Mike Mark took that and just done it for years. And Chuck Summers, I saw Chuck in here earlier. And the guys that uh, that's been so much part of our program and all the uh, radio, Mike and Randy. Where did Randy go? He didn't get permission to leave. <laughs> but even Mike Davis, for all the years that we've had together, Mike doing the radio and the friendship that we have from one another. 
the executive board has already been called out, but I don't want you to clap for them, but I do want them to stand up. Jerry Ingram, these, these people were here when I came back in 94, okay? The Jerry Ingram, Gloria Snyder, Judy Phillips, Sandy Johnson, Tom Walmer, Buddy Romax, Johnny Evans, Harris Roberts, Marty Shepard, Jimmy Walker. Uh, they didn't all stand up. <laughs> I went too fast. Y'all all stand up, please. Stand up, stand up, Tom. Okay, constant. All right, good. All right, listen, guys. Y'all do a hey. Get, listen, people. It's not something you just say in two seconds and forget. These people put their life into it here. Do so much for us. You just don't understand and realize what an effort that they put into it. I know that Coach Kendrick's going to find that out, and I know you guys are going to be there to assist him. I prepped you for that, right? I told y'all over and over. Over and over. And I appreciate y'all. And uh, all the people that hasn't been with us the whole time. I appreciate you guys doing all the work that y'all did and all. And I'm going to be a little bit remiss if I don't at least mention the first time I was at in Warner Robins. First young time, the coach something all, uh, you know, and I've told this story, Vaughn shared it with me again the other day, you know, that one of the, the chewing out that I got when I was a young coach, it, uh, and I wasn't even to blame, I don't really believe it. We left the lid off the nitro can, can Bonnie, and I got chewed out for it. Literally got chewed out for it. And, uh, but Coach Summerall, you know, I appreciate the influence he has. Mr. Purdue, Mr. Purdue is the kind of guy now, I'll tell you, Kevin, if y'all were here now, y'all would be reprimanded all, already because the other day, Monday or Tuesday, when y'all were outside, you left a chair outside. Mr. Arthur, am I not correct on this? If you left a chair outside in the school campus with Mr. Purdue's superintendent, I guarantee you'd know it. He would let you know in a hurry. I mean, he was the guy that he got up at 4 o'clock in the morning and toured the building before anybody got there so he didn't know what was going on. Jim Boswell, I know he's a, you know, the other guy, but his son, Mike, uh, the Cleghorns, the Malones, a lot of you know, Paul Sheet, I think I saw Paul here. I don't know if he got tired of left. Somebody's getting old, but Paul uh, is one of the first guys. We went to, we joined the First Baptist Church, went to church with him there. And listen, he's a councilman now, so there's hope for all of us. <laughs> I want to some, uh, recognize some, call some names of some family and friends who have passed. And uh, these people mean a, a great, great deal to, to me in Northside High School. Obviously, one of the first ones is Chris Johnson, <coughs> Kathy McSwain, Pat Summers, Tommy McNeil, Pastor Terry Taylor. Jane and Lucille McCullers, y'all don't know them, but they're a, they were just Northside people. They're, they lived in Alabama. They were at Lincoln High School. Donald knows them, you know. Very outstanding, high caliber people. Chris's dad, Bob Chapman. My best friend in high school, but it didn't move. My mom and dad. A lot of y'all know the story now, but uh, uh, Betsy's mother, got killed in a car wreck when she was in like the third grade. And uh, Donald and Betty Jo raised her. Donald, if you'd go, just go ahead and stand up. Donald and Betty Jo raised her and from the third grade on. And uh, uh, said, just stay up, Donald, please. Just stay up. <laughs> I can see there. Okay. Uh, of course, I dated Pat. She liked Coach said off and on. And, uh, I think I was one of the first dates and all that she had and everything. Of me, me, me. <laughs> anyway, uh, when it came time for getting married, you know, uh, Donald was really apprehensive about it. You know, to be very honest, he didn't want her to marry. You know, Donald had been married almost 45 years now. Are you okay with it now? <laughs> Get it better. That time, Donald uh, and Ed, Danny know, Ed, Ed knows very well. Uh, Donald's wife and Pat's sister, Betty Jo, passed away 10 years ago. The same time my mom did, about two weeks apart. And uh, of course, this is, I'd like to introduce Corrine to Donald's present wife. She's dead. I have to, uh, Charles and Rover, Chicken Man. Kevin's already mentioned them a little bit. All y'all stand, Charles. Charles and Rhoda, Chicken Man team, comes to a lot of our ball games, a lot of ball games. Amber and Ashley, 
Ashley and Zach, y'all stand please. Amber and Zach, Amber and Ashley are like uh, brothers and sisters to Patrick and Crystal. We lived in Amberville, they lived in Amberville. And I'm going to literally tell you now, when Amber was growing up, she couldn't hardly breathe without Patrick and Rusty getting on her. She, her shorts had to be a certain length. Everything had to be just, just right. And, uh, and uh, she's a she's an outstanding young lady, and we're very, very proud of her and all, and uh, just do a great job. This is uh, this is Dawn's family, though. Okay, thank y'all, thank y'all. Glenn in Glenn in Georgia. Glenn, uh, yeah, y'all stand, please. Glenn in Georgia, real quick. Uh, Glenn is Pets' brother. They uh, supported us through the years. They got a great family themselves. I really, really appreciate them being here. Uh, my oldest sister, she's not older than me, but my oldest sister, Diane, Kenneth, Diane, if you'd stand, uh, means so much to me. Mark and Cleet, her sons, my nephews, uh, these two guys here, uh, they, uh, they've become productive adults. Guys that I'm really, really proud of, about 20 years like I'm talking about. Those guys, are, I'm really proud of you guys, y'all know that. Y'all know that. I want you to keep on making you proud. My other sister, Becky, she's right here. My brother-in-law, Bobby, he has a little bit of trouble driving now. He's like me, he's getting a little old. But uh, my aunt, stand up, stay up, Becky. My aunt, Eddie Lou, look, uh, she, if y'all check her out now, that uh, she's a, a little bit, a little bit older than I am now, a little bit older. But uh, I'm so thankful that, that they came and been with us today. The coach has already mentioned Butch. Butch and Doris, Butch is our uh, class, uh, stand up Butch, Butch is our class president, uh, high school president, and uh, he played football, basketball, baseball with me, we've done a lot of things, we've been staying good friends through the years like most of our class have, and I'm just very, very thankful that he came over today, I know it wasn't an easy trip for him to come over, but thank you Butch. And we've already recognized Rusty and Angie, all the grandkids and all, I love them to death, uh, the thing about uh, those guys that uh, I had the pleasure of coaching them in high school. That's one of my great pleasures in high school. And I know that Patrick today, he really uh, gets on to me all the time about uh, uh, not being able to play at Northside. You know, that's one thing that he, he really wanted to do, is play at Northside. And one other name, I should have read all these names out, but I sort of got emotional there. Alvin Taylor, too. I, I almost miss that name that, to, that has passed. Uh, Pitson, I'm going to ask you to come up here. We're, we're getting close to them. Come on up, Pitson. She don't know this, okay? Doesn't know this, but I'm going to... Uh, she gave me a card. Let me stand up here for a second. She gave me a card. Uh, this was uh, after the state championship game in Statesboro. After the state championship game in Statesboro. Y'all remember we lost that one now. Lost that game. And Patsy gave me this card. Can you read it? I didn't know. She did. You know this. Dreams really can come true, but they are most often the results of hard work, determination, and persistence. When the end of the journey seems impossible to reach, remember that all you need to do is to take one more step. Stay focused on your goal and remember, each small step will bring you a little closer. When the road becomes hard to travel and it feels as if you'll never reach the end, look deep inside your heart and you'll find strength you never knew you had. Believe in yourself and remember, I believe in you too. You know, uh, again, that was after we lost the state championship game. And I want to, she didn't tell you how she signed it. To you from me. <laughs> to you from me. I want to recognize a couple other uh, people here before we uh, uh, get through. Uh, Donna and Richard. Donna, stand up. Donna uh, did a great thing for me today. I can't tell you about it. She did a great job for me today. I really appreciate her and Richard coming over. Uh, I want to recognize uh, uh, Angie's mom and dad. Uh, Buddy and Nancy Garrett, y'all stand please. I really appreciate y'all all the support and all that y'all given us through the years. And uh, Chris's mom and stepfather Jim and Linda Sadler came down from Chattanooga today to be with us. Jim, y'all 
stand. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for being with us. I have to, uh, to close, you know, as it's been stated very, very many times today, I believe in the Bible. I believe there's a heaven and I believe there's a hell. I have faith that I've accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. When I get to heaven, my big desire in life, this is my number one goal in life, is God will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's, that's one of my big things. I can't praise God enough for all that I've made to help. Uh, the opportunity to, to come into so many people's lives, uh, it's a blessing for me. I feel like that I was called to be a coach. I really believe that. A few times I've debated on uh, getting into uh, administration, but uh, God just led me to stay where I was. Uh, I can't praise Him enough for that. Uh, I'd like to close uh, again with uh, it's been said many times, and uh, I would say thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's great to be at Northside East. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for being here tonight. Bear with me just a moment, please. We're going to have one more person come up for an announcement about what we're going to do next. Uh, I will say that. You know, they talk about coaching and, and his time schedule. And, you know, you go in his office, it's got what time the team gets there, what time they get dressed, what time they get on the bus, what time they get to the rest here. Coach Kinsley, you and I didn't do quite as good a job tonight on the, on the planning of the time schedule. But I can tell you, it was worth every single minute. I enjoyed it thoroughly. The coach deserves that. <laughs> Everybody knows, and you can see how obvious it is, that the attachment, the passion that people have for Northside High School at one point to become involved. And then we talked about Dr. Hines coming here and just immediately uh, that being the case with him. Well, that's true about our next person who's going to come up and make an announcement. Yeah, he's up, this is only his second year. He hasn't even been here two complete years. And, and, and just from day one, he, he became a Northside Eagle, and he's true blue. And to continue as we were going tonight, Coach, your fifth and last pre uh, principal at Northside High School, Mark Scott. I certainly appreciate everyone being here this evening, and I just, I won't keep you long. We're going to move over from here to the commons area of the lunchroom, and when we leave here, we'll go through the career tech building, which ends into the cafeteria, so we will we'll have some directions out that will help you to get there. But I did want to just tell you a little bit about uh, the beginning of my experience with Northside High School and, and Coach Nix. Um, the interview process, and, and Dr. Hine mentioned a little bit about the process, but when, when they interviewed uh, for the high school principal job here at Northside, um, I, I think somebody thought it was real important that they got the right person, and I hope that I am that person. But the, uh, the interview process was pretty grueling. We had about 25 or 30 people in the room, and we went around and, and did the interviews. And I was lucky enough to be selected as one of the finalists and had to come back for a second round of interviews uh, with another uh, meeting with the executive cabinet. And uh, after the uh, work session of the board on that Monday evening, before they made the, the announcement that I was the principal at Northside High School, Mr. Carpenter called me to offer me the position and to talk with me about that and, and give me instructions for the next day. And we got off the phone after talking for about 20, 30 minutes and my phone rang and I, and I looked down and, and it was Mr. Carpenter calling back. And he said, Mark, I know this is not something that men normally talk about, but Dr. Hines, and thinking from his experience back when he wore red to Northside, had called Mr. Carpenter and said, whatever you do, Tell Mark, do not wear a red tie to Northside. <laughs> and um, so, and, and many of you met my wife. I sent my wife scurrying out to make sure I had the, the right blue tie to wear when I was introduced to the faculty. Well, quickly upon arriving at Northside, and um, it was not long before Mr. Dyson came and had a visit with me. And he sat down. And um, we, we talk about work ethic and some of those things that Coach Nix has. But Mr. Dyson sat down with me and he said, I don't need some of your time, I need all of your time. And uh, that's what he meant. He, 
he wanted us to, to be dedicated to Northside, dedicated to what Northside means. I think because of Coach Nix, uh, we, we, one thing that we're very proud of, we have over 40 members of our staff that graduated from Northside High School. There's not many schools that can say 40 of their employees graduated from their school, but it's the kinds of things that these players talked about, the, the kinds of things that we've talked about all evening about Coach Nix and his passion for everything Northside, not just athletics, but everything Northside. But quickly upon me arriving at Northside, I began to see uh, blue shirts show up on my desk. And I think that was his subtle way of telling me this is what you need to wear when, you, when you're at Northside. And he, he picked up pretty quickly that I was a graduate of the University of Georgia and that I, I like Georgia. So one day we're walking down the hall and he told me, he said, now, you don't need to wear anything red. They sell Georgia stuff that's gray and black. <laughs> and so uh, I had a lot of Georgia stuff that, that, that no longer used thanks to Coach Nicks. But uh, it's been a, certainly been a pleasure uh, to be a part of Coach Nicks. Coach Nicks, I just can't say how much uh, he, he, how hard he works and the work ethic that he has. And, and one day, it hadn't been too long ago, we were in a discussion about the alarms going off one night, or one morning, early in the morning. And of all the things Coach Nix has and, 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 and he's involved in, he said, if you ever want me just to come up there and check on that, I'll be glad to do that. I'm right there. It won't take me but five minutes to get there. And um, so it's, it's not often that we have people that are willing to step up and help other people. And I, I, I'm so proud that I got the opportunity to get to know Coach Nix. Uh, we're certainly going to miss him. And um, I, I, I'm proud to say that I've been affiliated with him at Northside High School. And I hope that he'll continue to serve us and the people of the Northside community for a long, long time. And again, congratulations to Coach Nix. And we love you, Coach Nix. Okay, at this time, if, if everyone would, you can go out at the, the back of the theater. You can use these side doors as well. The building was used the back. Coach Kinsley wants us to use the back. He's taking lessons from Coach Nick. <laughs> we'll, we'll use the back, and when we go outside, we'll take the doors that are, are, are to your right and go out the building, and uh, that will carry you into the cafeteria. Yeah. Thanks, everybody.